Welcome to the 8th grade math homework helper series. Tonight's homework is NS1, square roots and cube roots. We'll start by going over some vocabulary. Square, to multiply a number by itself. For example, 3 squared is equal to 3 times 3. Square root, you can think of this as sort of the opposite of squaring. Think to yourself, what number multiplied by itself would give me this, as, this number as an answer? For example, the square root of 64 is 8, because 8 times 8 equals 64. Cube, to multiply a number by itself three times. For example, 2 cubed equals 2 times 2 times 2. And cube root is the opposite of cubing, just like square root was the opposite of squaring. So with a cube root, you want to think to yourself, what number multiplied by itself three times would give me this number as an answer? For example, the cube root of 8 is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. Radical symbol. This symbol is also known as the square root symbol. Now we'll start by taking a look at question 2a. And you are trying to figure out what two consecutive integers this particular number falls between. And so we have to try and figure out what number times itself three times is going to give me 800 as an answer. Well, the first thing that pops into my head is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000. So I'm going to toss that out as my first guess. And that falls on the high end of 800. And so now I just need to find what's on the low end of 800. But it has to be consecutive. So if 10 works, maybe 9 works. 9 and 10 are consecutive numbers. And so I shall try 9. 9 times 9 is 81. And 81 times 9 is 729, which does fall just to this side of 800. So that works out. And I can say that the two consecutive integers are between 9 and 10. Now let's take a look at 2b. Here we have the square root of 355. Well, thinking back to what we had done before, I know 10 times 10 equals 100, but that's nowhere near close enough. And I know 20 times 20 equals 400, which seems a touch high. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit from 20, and my first guess is going to be 18. So 18 times 18 is 324. It's close to 355, but it's on the low side. So in order for this to be part, that would mean that 19 would have to work on the high side of 355. And so 19 times 19 is 361, and so it does work. So the two consecutive integers that the square root of 355 falls between would be 18 and 19. Keep in mind, for neither of these, A or B, you're, are you being asked to find what the actual answer is for this? Or for A. You just need to find the two numbers that it falls between. And question number three, the last question we're going to do. A cube has a volume of 3,375 cubic centimeters. What is the length of one side of the cube? Well, first thing you need to know is the formula for the volume of a cube, which is V equals S cubed. The reason we can do s cubed is because the volume of a cube, a cube is made up of squares. And so whether you're looking at the width, the length, the height, squares, all sides of a square are the same. And so all these measurements are going to be the same as well. And so we can set this up using the information that we were given. We know volume is 3,375, so we can substitute this for v. And we have s cubed equals 3,375. And we know that we want to get s by itself to find the length of one side. And the way that we remove a cube is to find the cube root. So the cubed root of s cubed equals the cubed root of 3,375. Now, 3,375 is a pretty big number to wrap your head around. And it probably does not jump out at you immediately what number times itself three times would get you to that point. But let's work with some benchmarks that we do know. I know that 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000, and that's not even close to where we need to be. So I'm going to jump to another benchmark of 20 times 20 times 20, and I'm going to make that my first guess. So 20 times 20 is 400 times 20 is 8,000. 
way higher than I need. So I'm going to start backtracking a little bit. So my second guess, I'm going to work with 14. Let's see how that goes. 14 times 14 is 196 times 14 is 2,744. Well, that's sort of in the ballpark. It's on the low end. So let's try 15 and see if we get a little closer. And 15 is going to be my third guess. And 15 times 15 is 225 times 15 works out to be exactly 3,375. So that tells me that S is equal to 15 and that the length of one side of the cube is 15 centimeters. Please use the work that was done for you tonight to help you to solve the additional problems that are on your homework. And remember, the key to success in math is not only working hard, but working smart.